Hi guys, it's Andrea. So a question I get a lot is how I edit my Instagram photos. So I thought it would be a fun idea to show how I do that and the process that goes into all of my photos. So a quick disclaimer is that I know I edit destructively if you have a problem with that, maybe don't watch this video. <laughs> I know I need to not edit like that, but this is just what works for me for now and I work for myself and I'm the only person that ever edits my photos, so that's what I do. Anyway, let's start. <laughs> So first what I do is I edit the photo using the camera raw filter in Photoshop. So this is where I edit uh, things like the exposure, I edit the contrast, I mess with the highlights. I also increase the vibrance and the saturation as well as the warmth of the photo. A lot of times with photos, I kind of just go with what I feel looks best. There's not really a method to this that I know of, or maybe it's all subconscious in my head. And so yeah, you can see how the colors have changed since the original photo. Something else I like to do is use the dodge tool to brighten up things like her face or her eyes individually. A lot of times people like making their doll eyes super bright, but I don't make it that bright. I just brighten it up just a little bit. And yeah, especially for these photos that I take on vacation, I take them very quickly and fast because I don't want to waste too much time taking photos. Like I'm traveling and I just take a doll photo for fun just to remember that place. And so a lot of times they aren't perfect and I do have to fix them in Photoshop. I also a lot of times increase the clarity just because I like the way it looks. And yeah, that's all I do for a simple photo like this, adjusting the lighting and the colors to the way I want. Okay, moving on to the next photo, I took this in Central Park and I didn't have a reflector with me at the time, but the lighting was super weird and so the photo that I liked the best was the one where she was in the shadows where you could barely see her. So I'm going to show you basically how I brighten up a doll. So I use the select tool to just select around the doll and make her a layer on her own so that I can edit her separately from the background. So you can see here, she's on a layer by herself. Then I went into the camera raw filter and increased the brightness of the doll. So I increased the exposure, the shadows. You can see here a little bit of what I did, but basically I mess around until I think she's bright enough for how I want her to look in the photo. And once I'm satisfied with that, press OK and you can see she's much brighter now. Way too bright though, because the background photo still isn't adjusted. So I go in and edit that also using the camera raw filter. So I increase the exposure here, lowered the highlights because I wanted to be able to see the sky a little bit better. I also increased the vibrance and the saturation a lot because I like the photos to be bright and colorful. And keep in mind that I edit this all for Instagram. I only edit to post on Instagram. And so my aim is just to make a photo that looks good for Instagram basically. Then I went and also used the dodge tool to brighten up her face a little bit more. I also brightened up her hair because it's shiny, I don't know. I darkened her hand a bit because her hand was the only bit that was actually in the sun. <laughs> so I didn't want that to stand out too much. Next I decided I wanted her hair to actually be blowing in the wind a little bit more. So I decided to cut out the braid individually so that I could tilt it upwards just a little bit so that it would look like it's blowing in the wind. So I put that on its own layer using the lasso tool and then I just erased around what I needed. Like I said, this is all destructive editing. So I know this isn't the best way to edit, but this is just what works for me for now. I'm gonna learn to edit non-destructively, don't worry. <laughs> So I kind of adjusted it, used the warp tool to make it go up a little bit more. And yeah, you can see how that turned out. I also thought that you might need to see the other braid. So I made a duplicate of this braid and put it on the layer behind the cutout of the doll because I thought it would look good. It didn't really matter to be honest. I don't know why I did this. It wasn't necessary at all. I also added a little bit of a sun ray flare thing in the background. 
I like adding that. It's just a uh, PNG from Google. I think I look up Sunrays PNG and that one shows up. So I like adding that into the photos if I didn't originally have any sun rays or flares in it. I think it just adds just a little bit of sunlight to the photo. And yeah, that's everything for this photo. So I basically repeat this process to all the photos where I think the doll turned out a little bit dark or doesn't match properly in the lighting. While I recommend that you, you know, actually get the lighting correct in the first place, uh, this is a good alternative, especially if you're traveling like me or if you're on a time crunch and you're editing for a quality of a photo that is going to be posted to something like Instagram that, you know, degrades the quality right away <laughs> the minute you post it. It also works well for photos that were very backlit, like this one that I took by this bridge and waterfall. The background was very bright and there wasn't much light on the doll, so I knew I was going to have to fix it in Photoshop later. So that's basically what I did here. I would recommend if you really want to learn Photoshop is obviously there's tons of tutorials and stuff out there. This is just how I think it works for me for doll photo specifically, which is completely different from human photography. If you really want to learn Photoshop, I recommend you go out and find your own tutorials. But I thought I would show my process because I get a lot of questions on it and I, I get a little bit nervous because I know there are people out there that could criticize the way I edit, but I can always change that in the future and I'm always open to learn more. So I hope you enjoyed this video um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.